quickly want to mention this also this is absolutely crazy and to me really 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 funny because if anything this is another illustration and another kind of example of why i always say when i you know refer to the idea that even though men maybe have the advantage when it comes to women in terms of you know altercations where you can maybe exert your physical force i personally think there's nothing nothing more damaging than a woman's words to a man like women have the ability to say things to a dude that can legitimately rest in his soul for years upon years upon years to the point where it legitimately bugs him keeps him up at night to the point where he might just you know freak out and take it out on people next to him and you have no idea why this guy's freaking out but he's actually freaking out because of something some girl said to him and he was flipping 12 or something women have that ability and one good example of this is dj academics recently dj academics recently went on a bit of a rant regarding the whole megan Thee stallion and tory lanes thing which i'll talk about later and one of these ladies that was covering the whole tory lanes and megan Thee stallion case called megan cunnacliffe i think her name is she's been at, at court reporting on everything that's been going on but you know watching it from afar you can tell she was mostly kind of team megan which you're allowed to do right if you're an independent person journalist person covering whatever you're covering i don't think it's bad to have a bias but she's been clearly more so on the side of megan which is what it is Anyway, with that being said, she's been inside of Megan, but she's also been kind of anti independent blogger like a lot of those in you know bloggers that have pages on instagram have been attending the Tory Lanez and Megan the stallion case and sometimes which they have a tendency to do they've been kind of chasing stories instead of just reporting what's happening in the court um you know in the court proceedings and stuff they've been purposely you know misrepresenting what was said or twisting what was said whatever maybe just you know kind of adding their bit of spice what they do to stories which is what they kind of do to all stories and i guess if you're a legit journalist that probably doesn't get as much traction as these pages do because maybe they spice up stories but they got hundreds of thousands of followers sometimes millions they get a lot of support from their fans in terms of donations and subscriptions and views and whatever maybe and it's just a way more of a on paper sexier job to be a flipping instagram blogger and have a page like that than it is to work for the rolling stone writing articles about fucking dave portnoy or something business insider right just a feels a bit more fun so for every reason, this Megan Cunnock of journalist woman has had a bit of a stick up her ass about all these independent black blogs reporting on Megan Thee and Tory Lane's case. So she recently, when the case, when the case got, you know, done and Tory Lane's has been sentenced, she basically revealed that the judge revealed in some ways, shape or form that the Tory Lane's information, I think some of the stuff that was in the discovery was leaked to academics. And I think at the time, earlier on, when it was leaked to him, people were wondering, how did he get hold of these documents and shit? And a lot of people kind of theorized that maybe Tory Lanez's camp gave it to him because you know, academics and Tory were kind of cool before he went in. He did an interview with him. They spoke, bloody blah, blah, blah. He's adamant that he didn't come from Tory Lanez's camp, but somebody else. But anyway, Mega Connorcliffe put that information out there that the judge has revealed, you know, that <laughs> that he was in, a, he got some of the information that he shouldn't have got um, directly from Tory which might have kind of hurt Tory's chances of kind of getting a lesser sentence and in the rent of talking about this woman he starts mentioning Erica Badu and if you don't know academics Erica Badu have an interesting history where many many years ago on everyday struggle Erica Badu went on there and kind of trolled her academics and basically called him Jerry from Tom and Jerry which hurt his feelings because Jerry from Tom and Jerry has a very wide fat face which you know unfortunately academics has by birth and also because of his alcoholic consumption and he didn't like that obviously at the time it kind of stung a little bit and it stung so much that five or six years later he just randomly mentioned it <laughs> because some person in the comments says eric badu eric badu um, work your magic so let's play the clip of academics wiling out but it's an absolutely incredible clip because it shows again the power women's words have on some dudes because he still hasn't been able to let this go five years later. Oh, why, why is it not playing? Why is it not playing? Bear with me a second. There you go. Go back here one more time. Subscribe to my channel, like this video. I'll see you guys later. Here's another thing. Somebody said, Erica Badu working magic. Erica Badu, let me tell you this. You keep my name out your mouth too. I see you mention... Listen, that whole little everyday struggle shit, that was another era, my nigga. I'm down to violate all you niggas these days. Fuck what y'all got going on. You don't mention my name, please. I'm, I'm just I'm going to tell you off right. I don't fuck with you neither. Just, 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 bro, I'm on really disrespectful timing. You niggas got to show me. Facts. You got to show me.
he's saying you niggas got to show me, but remember, he's talking about a woman, right? He's talking about a woman that's probably old enough to be his mum. That's who he's talking about. He's saying you niggas need to show me, but he's talking about a woman that's like, what, in her 50s? That's old enough to be his mum. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. That little say shit you got going on, don't ain't fuck with me. Straight up. I'm telling all y'all this because I don't respect y'all. I, I would like to let all y'all know I don't respect y'all. I don't respect y'all like y'all. Don't respect me. Because when I met all y'all, y'all all try to play me. I never fuck with Erica Badu after she came <laughs> on my show when she was trying to be funny. Bitch, I don't fuck with you after that. Nigga, what's up now? What we finna do? You kind of have to own the diss, though. You got to own the diss because, unfortunately, academics does kind of look like Jerry from Tom and Jerry. It kind of just is what it is. Like, the face is what the face is. You kind of have to own it. The last thing I'd want to do in my entire life is let somebody know that they got to me and one of the ways you let somebody know they got to you is by overly you know acting overly emotional at like the slightest kind of diss or also ranting and raving about something that someone said to you you know as a joke as a troll six years ago i would never do it i would rather literally die than let somebody know that they got to me in that way I'd rather pretend, I'd rather bury it deep, 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 deep down in my fucking subconscious to the point where I don't remember it, but I'm not about to fucking let you know that you got to me in this way. The academics really kind of fucked up in that regard. Dude, bitch, you old ass hoe just keep getting fucked by all these young niggas. What's popping? What we finna do? I ain't fuck with none of y'all niggas. Still. Bitch, call Tyrone, call Jamal, call everybody. Big Ack is here. None of y'all niggas ain't finna do shit, my nigga. <laughs> I'm telling all y'all the real about it. I see that bitch follow me. I'm like, bitch, why is you following me? I don't fuck with you. I'm not. In Big up Erica Badu for the fucking 4D chess move. She followed, she fought, she dissed him on the show and then randomly followed him. <laughs> There's nothing better than getting somebody by just killing them with kindness, right? Acting like you're completely oblivious to what, how they're feeling and how pissed off they are and just kind of, you know, going about your everyday life knowing full well that they're fucking you know picturing arguing with you they're picturing running into you and doing something to you or you know reading you down and you're just kind of living your everyday life double tapping their pictures leaving them nice comments wishing them happy birthday <laughs> that's the best way to do it ain't no, no joke with you you and your little twitter following or whatever the fuck you got bitch you came up in here sh Raving around Sage and all that type of shit. Fuck y'all niggas. Y'all niggas gonna have to show me now. I'm sorry. I've gotten to the point. Y'all got to show me. Y'all got to show me. Ack is at the point. You got to show me. You got to show me. If you don't show me, I'm I'm gonna disrespect y'all. You got to show me. You have to show. I promise you, you have to show me. I'm at the point. You have to show me. And I've always said, I think part of the reason why Ack is always like this and has kind of got this weird... Um, tendencies to not let things go and kind of overcompensate my theory is that ever since that Vic Mensa running when Vic Mensa appeared on Everyday Struggle and basically said he wanted to slap um, you know academics and kind of sunned him live on air and academics said okay and kind of bitched out I think ever since then he's regretted that and I think most men have that. I think I've had that instance my my time in my life when I was growing up. You know, I'm even stuttering mentioning it now, but I've I've had that instance when I was growing up where I got into a fight when I was super young that I started losing, and then instead of fighting back, I just started running. <laughs> I started running away, and the guy was chasing me down the street. And I remember that thing kind of like eating away at me for a long time until I started like you know taking up a bit of Muay Thai, doing a bit of boxing and stuff and training. And, you know, I got my wins in a few street fights here and there. And over, over the time I got my wins, I got my Ws, but I didn't run, right? And I had to kind of get over that by putting myself through that kind of thing. And I think most dudes have that. Like you get sunned once or you get embarrassed once or you lose a fight once. And sometimes if you don't get your lick back, it can really eat away at you. And I think Ever since that Vic Mentor point where he kind of got, I wouldn't say emasculated, but he kind of got sunned. He kind of got made to feel like a pussy. He kind of got talked down on and he was a laughing stock of the internet for a long time. And then again, following that, we saw how he reacted when Joe Budden got into that Pasa Pasa with Amigos on a red carpet. And he was like shuddering and flick, you know, fidgeting with a fucking microphone. It just didn't sit right with him. So despite him making millions millions of dollars right being very successful having a huge fan base 
and essentially kind of being self-made which is incredible right to think that he's kind of made this incredible career all off of just like ranting into a camera about hip-hop shit right which is great to see you can still tell that whole time of like you know getting sunned and being looked at as a laughing stock and maybe even school because he always kind of strikes me a little bit of somebody who maybe wasn't the coolest in school but now is kind of you know his come up he still isn't able to let it go. I think you should be able to let it go. You're like, you've achieved, achieved what you've achieved. You shouldn't be trying to, you know, overcompensate and trying to prove yourself by screaming and shouting at women or screaming and shouting behind your computer. If he's saying people have to show him, I think he also has to show people. Academics needs to, this is my opinion only, I think academics needs to have a very public fight with somebody, especially, more, you know, preferably a guy. If he does a girl thing, it's not going to happen. But Ak needs to have a very public fight with somebody physically with fist and not lose. It may be even, but just not lose. He just needs something like that. He needs something. He just needs one fight with somebody, whether it's little baby, whoever it is, throw hands. Like people be like, oh shit, academics has actually got good hands. He's got a good chin. Like he just needs one of those kind of fights and then he'll be set. But until he has one of those kind of fights, he's always going to be looked at as a bit of a laughing stock, which I wouldn't mind. If you have the money that he has and you, you have the ability to kind of talk to your fans when you need to and all these brand deals, you shouldn't worry about people thinking you're a pussy or people thinking that you don't get girls or thinking that the girls that you deal with are ugly. Whatever the people think about you, like thinking that you're not cool, that shouldn't really matter if you've got the things that he kind of wanted, right? Which is cars, money, like, you know, independence, all this sort of stuff. That shouldn't be a worry, but clearly it is. So if it is a worry, he needs to just text little baby text whoever else he doesn't like as a dude meet up meet him wherever it may be and just throw hands the moment he throw hands at that person especially if he wins he's going to be safe forever no one's ever going to talk shit about him ever again but until that happens he's always going to be mocked i'm actually and i actually can't wait to see what erica Badu says as a, as a reply miss came here waving all type of wands and shit i'm trying to be nice to you now i realize oh you was trying to play me like i'm some clown Bitch, fuck you, nigga. How many how many rappers done ran through you, nigga? None of you. Stop playing, nigga. How many young rappers you, you chase, nigga, trying to fuck them too? Stop playing, nigga. Fuck is you talking about? I'm not playing with none of y'all. That bitch can't mention me straight up. I'm telling you. I'm on that. I'm on that. I'm sorry. Y'all got to. Y'all have to show me. You will have to show me. I'm sorry. Man, I know three rappers done ran through you, fucked you, did all type of shit, bitch. You just like a, like you a cum rag for these niggas. You ain't about to play with me. You about to play with Big Ack? You a cum rag. The fuck is you talking about? Sorry. Y'all niggas got to show me. I'm sorry. I'm on that. Y'all got to show me. Y'all got to show me. Nigga, I sat on that for five years. Y'all got to show me now. Y'all got to show me. I'm sorry. I got to show me. I, don't, don't follow me. I'm now following you back. Don't fuck with you. Don't fuck with them jokes. Ain't no, oh, Jerry. We ain't fucking with that. You got to show me. You ran. Imagine blocking somebody for following you, just for following you. Do people do that? Like, you don't like somebody, but you just leave them alone. They leave you alone, but then they start following you. Do you just go through and just say, fuck it, block them? I don't want to, you, you can't see my stuff. <laughs> Which is really dumb because all they need to do is just open a new account and they can see it anyway. It's kind of a bit, you know, redundant really, because if they really want to see your stuff, they can just see it. It's easy. <laughs> Dude, chick who 45, I'm sorry. Get the fuck one out of here. Uh... I'm keeping it like that. The disrespect gonna stay up for everybody. Somebody said, pull it. Yeah, I get off stream, but I ain't taking shit down. I'm telling you, they have to show me. If they don't show me, I'm going to continue saying the same thing. They have to show me. Have to. Somebody said it was a joke. Well, this is a joke for me. You're a rant through bitch. <laughs> You're a rant through bitch. What's up? <laughs> I don't take no joke lightly, my nigga. I don't take none of that bitch. I'm sorry. I ain't, I'm, I'm on that with y'all. I don't take none of that shit. Like um, Seven Dirt is saying, why does he talk like this to women? To be fair to Ak and the content I've seen of his and the live streams I've watched, he actually is quite even. He does this to everybody. The one thing about Ak, I think he's always going to fire from the hip and talk really aggressively first. 
then when somebody claps back or says something to him, he'll then settle down. He did the same thing with um, Carisha and then Diddy had to get at him and told him to relax. He'll always go at guys and girls the same. He always attracts them with the same layer of vellum, especially if he doesn't know who they are. Then when they reach down behind the scenes, he'll come back and start copying, please. But this narrative that he only goes after women super hard isn't, isn't true. If anything, the one thing that academics does that I don't like as a dude is that he is kind of like involved in women's business. He's a bit messy in that regard. He likes to get involved in women's business. So because he gets involved in women's business, he then will talk about them the same way he talks about the guys. But it's not like he's picking and choosing. It's just going to be funny because most likely Jay, Jay Electronica or somebody is going to reach out to him behind the scenes and you're going to see a very different act on screen the next day, right? Or the next stream. That's the only thing that I kind of don't like about it. Like, if you're gonna keep, if you're gonna have this energy, people, I think it's a bit, you know, obviously it's not the greatest to be shouting and ranting and raving at a grown woman that is old enough to be your your mum in this regard, in that kind of level of seniority. But if you're gonna do it, stand on it. You know, don't start copying. Please later down the line, when certain people get in your ear, like you did with Carisha. No, if you think she's a dumb dumb, you think she's a fucking bimbo, you think she's fucking low IQ, you think she's not really a city girl, whatever you think of the girl, cool, but stand on it. Don't just buckle because somebody high up in the industry says something to you. Because he always preaches that he's like un what do you think called? He always preaches like how happy he is to do his own thing and he doesn't not rule by the industry, but then the other side is some certain people get in his ear, he's quick to kind of turn and sort of like let them know, hey, I didn't really mean it, I didn't really mean it. Lightly, man. I've been done take jokes lately. I ain't take none of that. <laughs> man, dude, uh, right, let's stop playing, man. I don't care who it is. <clears throat> Y'all gonna have to show me. You know why? Because I made a career. I done did everything I needed to do in this industry and my career without y'all. And I know trying to pander to y'all would never work. Mm -hmm. So why would I ever try to? I'm sorry. This is why Big Act ever existed. Because when I tried to be like, oh, I'm just happy to be here. Y'all shitted on me. Y'all treated me like a herb. Y'all treated me like, <laughs> y'all treated me like a loser. So now I'm going to shit on your legacy. And I'm going to shit on you. And I'm going to tell you to suck dick. And I'm going to tell you everything disrespectful. You have to show me. Because now I'm done. I done got what I wanted. I'm done rich. I'm mad lit. You have to show me. And I'm That's the thing, though. If you're mad lit and you're dumb rich, why is the words of this woman, what she said to you five years ago, still affecting you to this day? You know, he kind of talks out of both sides of his mouth. Like he's talking big, but his actions are proving that he's clearly hurt, which you're, you're allowed to be. I don't, you know, I don't begrudge the guy for feeling hurt, but because of what she said, you know, it kind of is what it is. You can't tell people what not to be hurt by. But personally, for me, I think this is a weak move because it exposes that you're hurt and you're clearly in your feels. And it clearly shows that, you know, people can get at you by just saying certain things that you act like don't bother you, but they clearly do. Because he kind of makes jokes about his own face and how fat he is, but clearly it's an insecurity that he can't really let go, even though he's got all the money and all the clout and all whatever he needs to do. So clearly that's an issue. So I'm eager to see what fucking um, Eric Badu's response is. Hopefully she just posts a fucking smiley face emoji. That'd be the best way to sort of counteract it. But yeah, academics is on a mad one. He's not having it. Um, he's fucking letting everyone flipping have it and just getting at them for the sake of getting at them and absolutely love it. Um, and then the other one, which I flipping love is this random clip, right? Again, this is something that's fucking hilarious. So I guess on that, again, maybe it's because Megan Cunnicliffe, Megan Cunnicliffe, the reporter that's really, that was in the court, you know, reporting on everything going on with Megan Thee Stallion and the fucking Tory Lanez case, she has a lot to answer for. I think she's she's the one to blame for all of these women, unfortunately, getting, you know, stray bullets courtesy of flipping academics because he had another victim on his flipping list of people that he went after during that rant. The other whip victim he went on was flipping scissor of all people. He start he wanted to then go and attack scissor for some random reason. I'm not really sure what the reason is. I'm sure they've got some past beef, but I would love to think the reason why academics isn't a fan of scissor might have to do with the same reason why he's not a fan of tinashe because the tinashe thing is hilarious because if i'm mistaken i forgot who it was i think who was who was it it might have been i forgot who it was but somebody basically told academics that tinashe doesn't like him or something right and i think it was then revealed that act tried to holler at tinashe behind the scenes but she wasn't 
having it. She's not, she's not, wasn't, she wasn't a fan of Ak and kind of, you know, told him in no uncertain terms, nah. And since then, Ak has fucking hated Tanache. So I wonder if the scissor thing is the same thing. Maybe he tried to holler at scissor, she curved him and he got offended by it. <laughs> and ever since then, he's fucking hurt. He's fucking hurt. So he decided to jump on this viral, semi-viral picture of fucking, um, scissor coming out of a bar club restaurant or whatever not looking her greatest and he decided to kind of rag on her and this is a fucking crazy way to go out hey academics ragging on scissor so i'm sorry i'm sorry i don't know what she did to me but like i've been had it on for her like fuck that i'm on time and i'm sorry to say yes i'm on some liquor but i don't care a fuck about these hoes anyway i ain't gonna lie the lipstick is the, the lip gloss is popping and by the way i do love my melanated queens you know what i mean this little see-through thing you gotta get you gotta get the titties right the titties is not looking tittying because right now i can't distinguish the titty from the stomach you look like you just got a whole motherfucking like bulletproof vest on your whole shit is flat your ass be fat sometimes but i'm telling you you got to get back on the knife more frequently Jesus you love to eat Christ. you are an eater you're a eater it's cool i like to eat too but chicks like you i'm gonna go with the gut y'all don't catch me with the gucci man gut y'all don't have to deal with that they, they already see my gut on the gram. X try to put the gr gut on the gram. They had a couple little bumps on it because, like, I've been trying to work out. Like, you know what I mean? I had an in girl on the ears. They try to say I had some shit. I don't care. I'm a nigga. But you, y'all be fat just like me, looking like a linebacker's. Your neck thick is like a 32 pack of Franks. And now y'all acting like y'all bad. You fat as fuck. Let's keep it a bean. You know you've been under the knife mad times we don't care how much you show that little botch bbl you need to get back to the doctor one more time and i'm gonna stand on it man we'll still f don't get it fucked up we are niggas it don't take much for us to fuck we're still f but you gotta get back to the doctor it's not the cameraman you're just like yo your body right now is in the part where you should be i think i was in miami i'm watching these bitches the bbls and all that shit done you bitch you need a corset that's what you need right now. Jesus a fucking corset. You suck the shit in to make you got like a big ass with a flat stomach. Because right now what I'm looking at, bitch, you look confused. Second of all, I don't know what's going on with your head. Ain't no way you catch a tan on this part of your hairline. And then there, this part is like this another color. So I got to imagine this is a lace front. But scissor, let me give you the truth. This is the ether that's going to make your fucking soul burn. I don't care how many albums you sell. You double chin. Uh, let me not say whole. I shouldn't say that. I apologize for that. You double chin chick. I'm sorry. I love you, by the way. You're a great musician. So I'm sorry. You are just as fat as me. The doctors, the fucking surgeons can't fix you. Okay? You're going to be getting cut up like fucking. Yo, you're going to get. You know the little surgeon game you give to kids? They're going to cut your ass up all day long. You're always fat, just like me. It's cool. Jesus the Christ. Right there. But that's the fact. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what y'all told my cancer, whatever. I don't give a fuck about these hoes. And I'm just going to keep it a bean. She's as... All these bitches will be you saying like, yo, act you fat. Bitch, you got a BBL. You're fat like me. You can't call me fat if you got a BBL. Bitch, you know what a BBL is? I'm sorry. Scissor. The lip gloss. The fake teeth. It doesn't matter. You're just a fat mini Lizzo <laughs> at your heart. You make great music. We love you because you make great music. But you'll never be one of those bitches that we're looking at and our dicks get really naturally hard for. You are chasing this thing that entertainment think. This is why I like Rod Wave. Rod Wave sells out stadiums. He doesn't say, oh, let me get a six pack. He says, you're going to catch this fucking gut. You're going to catch this fucking cellulite on my thighs. I'm going to show you the triple chin, and I'm going to sing this song. I got my heart on. I he going to sing that shit. You chicks are so, like, fucking self-conscious that you're singing shit. You're singing music about your feelings, but all you care about is the triple chin that's forming. And yes, yes, that's one chin, and you know that's another. It's cool. You just got to get the doctor to chop that bitch up, but make sure they give you the right anesthesiology. We don't want you to be, we don't want you to be like, 
You know what I mean? There's a couple of people who kind of like, who had that song that told my bitches down? Yeah, we don't want you to be, you know, yeah. <laughs> we don't want you croaking out over the fucking, yeah. But this is the truth. SZA, as long as you live, you could be a millionaire. You could be make the best songs in the world. You know, when you seen this photo <laughs> and you seen the triple chin, you seen the fucking, you look like a linebacker. And there's no definitions from your titties to your fucking gut. Jesus you Christ. We're sad. And it's cool because sometimes money can't cure all the issues. So you could get under that knife every single time and they'll cut you and they'll cut you and they'll keep trying to carve you up. And I remember the last time I talked about your fucking little BBL. And remember when I talked about it and you were trying to flex? Look, scissor. Anyway, you got you get the gist of what he's saying, right? Um, Ak is not a fan of scissor. Now, the amount of pot kettle black moments in that whole entire es you know rant is fucking legendary. There are so many instances that he said some stuff that could easily be applied to him, especially you know the saying of like, "Oh, money doesn't cure everything." That is the most probably blatantly insecure rant I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, I'm gonna take a radical POV. Or radical stance, you know, uh, for better, for a better saying. I don't think what he said is bad. If you believe what you say, just stand on it. I don't want him to now come back and start crying when other people dress him down the way he dressed down Scissor. I don't want you to mention your cars. I don't want you to mention how much money you have or how big your fucking house is or how many girls you fuck when somebody else tears you apart the way he tore apart Scissor calling her out about her looks talking about how you know what she thinks about herself all this malarkey if everybody rips academics the same way i don't want to see him cry i don't want to see him cop please and i don't want to see him use his materialistic things as an excuse for why he looks the way he does you can't do that and also it's just funny because it's funny coming from him because we've all seen what academics as girls look like unfortunately right it's just you know it's not a slight on the women themselves they they have innocent you know parties in this but we've seen the quality of women that academics attracts. And I have to say this just from the, you know, from the camp of the hetero guys out there. I will take scissor on a bad day, right? I'm taking scissor on a fucking bad day <laughs> over any, any flipping person that flipping, you know, Ak has been seen with or arguing with or has tried to expose him. I'm taking scissor any day over any of the ones that he's had. And you know, more than likely, Scissor in any flipping environment would, would probably touch this guy with a 10 foot barge pole. So the fact that he's coming at her so hard is hilarious. It's sort of like some, it's sort of like if I just randomly started ranting and raving on here about Megan Good or something, right? Talking about how ugly she is or whatever. It doesn't really matter because, you know, my opinion isn't valid because she'd never looked my way in the first place. It's that kind of idea. So it's really interesting. But I think this rant. I think it goes on for another five minutes, right? The video is, uh, I've only played five minutes of it, but it goes on for another five. It's a 10 minute 51 clip of a live stream. I'm going to go and say with some level of certainty that I think the Tinashe thing happened with Scissor too. I think in the same way that Tinashe allegedly rejected, you know, academics advances, whether he tried to ask her to be in his podcast or tried to ask her out for a date. I think the same thing happened with Scissor. I think academics tried to get on Scissor early. You know when SZA was accused of being a liar and would always kind of have the fake freckles and shit and didn't look as she, she does now, she didn't have a glow up. I think Ak might have reached out to SZA early before even Control come out. He thought he kind of spotted a kind of, you know, a sly hottie that no one knew. He tried to get in her DMs and even back then she knew, now nah, you're lame. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do this. And she said no. And I think ever since then, because back then I'm assuming Ak was probably, you know, well more well known than her probably he probably had more money than her he probably just assumed like a lot of guys do online now there's a there's this weird i don't know there's this weird like group of guys who exist now who purposely who you no know, who actually believe in their hearts that if they just amass a certain amount of money in the bank that it kind of opens them up to having whatever woman they want they just i don't know why they think that i just think some guys honestly think that every person out there is kind of driven by money which they aren't and um they kind of strive to it and then when they finally get it and realize that some women just won't ever fuck you regardless of how much money you have it's a bit of a reality it's it kind of fucks with their reality you know it fucks with their reality and their sense of fucking you know um 
whatever the sense of being that everything that they've kind of worked for to get to a certain level to allow them access to a certain caliber of woman is kind of null and void because they just don't like them as people <laughs> more so than the money of the bank so again another one i'm eager to see what happens next hopefully scissor does reply because i'm hoping that her reply is going to be something stingy and something harsh and it definitely is going to be something that um is going to be interesting to see academics going kind of back and forth with not only erica badu but also scissor on the timeline which i think isn't going to help his reputation of being known as somebody that bullies women but doesn't have the same energy for men i don't think that's true because like i said before i think there's plenty of evidence of academics being very you know rash and going after guys the same way does women but i think this story so far isn't the greatest for him so let's wait and see what happens